Okay. Well, we all lose our Rotary badges, which is a big part of our experience at Rotary. But we do, we are observant of the um, escalation of COVID cases in our community. And we're doing our best to keep things normal, but also, um, yeah, let's, let's make a path forward. If we could do that by uh, waiting a little longer until we use our badges. I hope you understand that. And those on Zoom, please um, mute your microphone. Ted, I'm looking at you. Uh, take a minute now to check in on your um, WhatsApp page or MySpace or whatever you use. You know, I mentioned to you that our club was founded in 1913. Can you guess who might be the longest serving member still with us today? Charles H. Weinbaum Jr. with us today. He served as club president in 1983 to 1984. Charlie joined our club on October 26, 1949, 71 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you might look at Charlie now and say it's been a rough day. Yeah, he had a little trip. Uh, he's gonna sue the property owner, except he is the property owner. So <laughs> to lead us in our invocation will be Virtue Alexander, grant writing manager, communities and schools. And for our pledges, Diane Bass, president, Advanced Pediatric Care, Inc. Introduction of guest, Twyla Baker, retired from Lamar University. Virtue. Thank you. If you could bow your heads for a word of prayer. Father, created in your image, we are a direct reflection of you. Every good thing comes from you. Every note of love and goodness we feel and extend is rooted in your great love for us. Whether we know Jesus or not, we know love. We all know what it feels like to be loved. It is the commonality that supplies the empathy we need to see each other for the people you created us to be. Help us to find the good in every person you place in our lives and on our paths. You are faithful to hear us and answer our prayers. You are close to the brokenhearted. Father, we are in awe of you and how you orchestrate the days of our lives and the individual love you have for each of us and our purposes. We are all unique, every person, and it brings you joy when we recognize each other for the people we are in you. May we continue to love each other with the love that you have for us. Amen. Please join me in the pledges to our country and our great state of Texas. The flag. I pledge allegiance to be Texas, one state under God, one in the Middle East. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. And now we will uh, please stand when your name is called. Sadia Shamiha. And I apologize in advance between my accent and other things. There's not much telling how this will come out. So welcome. And she is a guest of Christy Young. Thank you. Renee. Shin Seville, I'm sorry, Sheriff Paris, thank you. Martha Caderas, Hannah Loretta, thank you. Susan McFadden, Mary Ellen Robertson. Amy Wilson, guest of Jay Wilson. 
Rebecca Patton, guest with Cindy Cherry. Linda Domino, guest of Joe Domino. Shelly Brannon, guest of Deborah Drago. Okay, and Erica Harris, guest of Teresa Simpson. Jaquita Walker, guest of Jay Wilson. And Jerome Cabrera, guest of Lynn Castle. Thank you. Thank you, Twyla. I see the club is taking me seriously. Everyone bring one. And now to, uh, for some board action, uh, acting as our uh, club secretary in the place of Dana Tomeas, not Dana Tomeas, Jay Wilson. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, everyone. Happily filling in for Dana Tomeas. Um, as Brad mentioned, uh, we did, uh, the board met yesterday and had a really good productive meeting and we did a uh, option to do away with the badges for the short time. Um, you know, with the COVID cases going up, we just wanted to be safe uh, rather than sorry and err to the side of caution. We also are going to continue holding the, the uh, meetings in the hybrid format. So if we have a member that's not comfortable, they can still attend the meeting. And we're going to continue with the hand sanitizer and the mask. So uh, please make use of those as you come in and out of the room. In membership, we approved the return of three members who were terminated and had expressed an interest in coming back to the club. So please welcome back Jason Apodaca, Stephanie Roberts, and Robert Worley. We approve submitting an application for a matching grant from the district, 5910, as funding in part for our layouts for Nicaragua project. We also approve giving financial support to a graduate student planning to study abroad and who was previously nominated as a global grant scholar for the district. Our next boarding board meeting, boring meeting, board meeting will be on August 24th, and all members are welcome to attend. Just please make sure you make your reservation with Jackie. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Jay. I'm not going to argue the meeting what may have been a little boring. It certainly was long. My apologies to our faithful board members who have taken our challenge seriously about uh, adding club membership. And we have several board members, Jay included, have added, uh, I think Jay has added two so far. So uh, who will beat Jay Wilson? That's the question of the year, because he's adding more. In fact, uh, we will institute a, a club for Jay. It's called the President's Club. Qualification for the President's Club is sponsoring a club member, uh, qualifying a uh, new club member before the end of the year, any uh, qualified member of the President's Club is invited to a celebration dinner at the end of the year at the home of uh, Brad and Debbie Brown. And I will tell Debbie at some point. But if the numbers go their way, we will be dining at some local restaurant uh, that will be suitable for us. Uh, Deborah Drago has a, an announcement for Rotary After Hours. Deborah? Okay, let me start by quoting past president Lynn Castle. And fifth, will it be fun? Hold on. And I'm gonna apologize right now. You might wanna cover your ears. Lynn, this is for you. <laughs> Here's our story about fellowship and fun. Don't forget to bring your plus one. <laughs> There'll be food, giveaways, and a bar. <laughs> and Robert strumming his guitar. Hey, hey, whoa. Don't keep away from blue-eyed Brad. Okay, so no need to run around Sue 
or keep away from Blue-Eyed Brad. Instead, join our hosts, President Brad Brown and Robert Cocott, for our long-awaited return of Rotary After Hours. For some, Rotary is about service. Um, for others, it's about pro professional co connections. Uh, however, for all of us, it is about building goodwill and better friendships. Um, so fellowship and more tomorrow night, 530 to 7, First Financial Bank on Dallin. There will be parking at the bank as well as in the adjacent parking lot of Victory Hospital. And so we hope to see you there. I'm sure that sounded better when you thought of it. Uh, announcement about wine down with Rotary, Sherry Pierce. I'm not going to sing. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> so, <clears throat> y'all know about wine down? Mark your calendars. October the 7th at the um, event center downtown. It's going to happen this year. We tried so hard to make it. Yes, please. <laughs> we tried so hard to make it work last year and we just couldn't do it, but it's going to happen this year. And if you don't know, it's a wine tasting. Um, it's a fundraiser and we sell tickets and we have door uh, prizes and auction. And we just have a lot of fun and we don't know what all we're going to have this year because we're having our first meeting after Rotary next Wednesday. So if you would like to be a part of that committee, even if you haven't signed up, please feel free to stay and we will have some more details. But right back there on that table, just as you came in, there's a bunch of sign up sheets for the different committees for Wind Down. I think there's logistics and there's, um, uh, we probably have enough people to do the wine tasting, um, but then servers and um, all kind. yeah, there's a long list of those people. <laughs> but there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do, or you can just be on the committee and we'll find you something to do, trust me. But mark your calendars, October the 7th, Wine Down with Rotary. Thank you. I apologize to Rebecca Maxwell. I was to call you for an announcement of about recruiting committee, Rebecca. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. It is so great to see so many guests and returning Rotarians. So I encourage everyone, as our President Brown did earlier, to encourage you to continue to bring guests to our meetings. We are focusing on recruitment and membership a lot this year, so you will hear us talk about that throughout the year. And I want to remind us of one of the reasons why we talk about membership from the Rotarian Magazine this month, if you pick that up and read it, from Rotary International President Meta, if I pronounced that correctly, apologize if I did not. He says, imagine the change we as Rotary members can make when there are so many more of us. More people to care for others, more people to serve, to change lives. Think of the impact we can have through growing more in doing more. More members will enable us to embark on bigger and bolder service projects, and each of us can also continue to serve in our own personal ways, responding to the needs of our communities. So today, if you would like to be involved in recruitment, I encourage you to do so. We will have a meeting immediately following today's Rotary meeting. So if you would like to jump on board, um, please stay after the meeting if your schedule allows. If you're interested but not able to stay today, please just stop by. I'm kind of sitting in the back uh, with the troublemakers back there. So <laughs> if you would like to be involved um, but can't stay today, please stop by and just let me know you would like to serve on the committee. We have some wonderful projects coming up, as was just mentioned with Wind Down with Rotary. We also have a flag project coming up in September. So this is a great time to bring new potential members, get them involved not only in our club meetings, but also projects we have going on and really show them the heart of Rotary. So again, immediately after this meeting from uh, recruitment and membership, and then let me know if you'd like to serve in another way. Thank you. Cindy Cherry, you have an announcement about Zone Institute luncheon. We have our Rotary field trip coming up September 10th. We're going to Houston. We're going to drop into the zone meeting and uh, join 
those that are there to see Rotary International President-elect Jennifer Jones. And if you'll recall, Jennifer has been at our club before and spoke at one of our International Women's Day. We had two tables reserved. We only have four seats left. So for $100 that you give to Jackie, she puts you on the list. We need the names to turn in within the next two weeks. So if you would like to join us, we're going to get some carpools together and we're going to go have a fun time in Houston and meet a whole lot of interesting people from the zone. They're expecting um, a large amount of people and I hope that holds up. But our zone is all the way from Canada, all the way down through the whole middle of the United States uh, through Texas. So we have an opportunity to make some new friends and hear a wonderful speaker. So if you would like to join us, please get with Jackie. Thank you, Cindy. If you're like me, uh, you've been looking forward to this program today. We're lucky to have an uh, exciting program um, and to introduce our speaker, Lynn Castle, Director of Art Museum of Southeast Texas. Hi, everybody. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Inez Alvarez. Inez was born in Chihuahua, Mexico. Inez found herself in a new country at the young age of 16 when her family moved to the United States. Her love of drawing and painting became her life, life work after being challenged by an art teacher to create a mur mural. Today, she create, credits her inspiration and abstract style to the Tarara Mara Indians of Chihuahua. And to quote her, she says, once I opened my heart and eyes to the new community of Beaumont, I found myself inspired by the strong group of talented people following their passions. She says, um, <clears throat> she says, she's also a member of the Art Museum of Southeast Texas. Yay, gotta put, put in a little club there. Uh, the art studio, the Beaumont Art League. And uh, you probably have admired her work and didn't even realize that she was the artist at community events, she donates her art to many fundraisers and works a lot with children. And during the summer months, um, she's creating murals around Beaumont. The name of her studio is a perfect reflection of what she hopes to achieve through her paintings. It's a Marte Ama Arte, which in Spanish is, I'm sorry, I kind of butchered that, I'm sure, right, <laughs> Inez? To love yourself, love others, and to love art. She was honored as an artist for making a great artistic impact in our community by the Art Museum of Southeast Texas. This is two years ago. And also just to put in a little plug, her work is for sale in our gift shop, very reasonably priced. So please come visit. I know that some Rotarians have been in there and actually bought some of her work, but you can get like little tiny pieces like this. She makes little small ones that kind of fit together and she does big pieces too. So, um, you know, one of the best secrets in Beaumont is the art museum gift shop. So come visit us. And, um, <laughs> In that, and 80% and of it goes to the artist. So it's not, you know, the art museum isn't taking a lot of that. 80% goes to the artist. So you're really supporting the artists. So without further ado, Inez. Okay. Always have to take a few seconds to breathe. And I'm like, are you really here? And yes, I am here. I want to show you this box before I do anything else. So see this little box? I'm going to open it at the end of the speech. So just keep thinking what could have been inside of this box. To begin, I want to thank every one of you. I want to thank your presence. Since I started volunteering and becoming a board member in different uh, organizations, I realized that this right now, meetings, events you attend to, do take some time from your family, your profession, your rest time, or what I like to call me time. And that looks different for everyone. I, and I wanna thank you for that. I really do, I understand you. I know it, what it feels like. But I also know that you do it for the same reason that I do it. And that's because you care and you want the community to be better. So thank you again. I have a question for everyone. I need to relax. I have a question for everyone. Have any of you crashed a party before? Raise, raise your hand. 
and this can be intentionally or not, like I usually do, I promise. You have, good. For those that did not raise your hand, try it. It's, it's fun. And the reason I started with this is because a few months ago, I was walking downtown. And apparently, I knew there was a business to be open soon. But as we get closer, I realized that they're doing a soft opening party for friends and family only. But I can hear a saxophone. I love a good saxophone. If you want to get my skin, just, just play saxophone. So what do I do? I glue my face to the glass window to get a little glimpse of the scene. And the owner, as he sees us, he says, come in. And we go in. <laughs> we have no clue what to expect. But what happened that night, we were treated like family. The food was delicious. And what can I say about the music? It was everything I was hoping for. The talented musician, his name is Perry. He's originally from Orange, Texas. He now lives in Houston, and he took the time to share how much the support of his wife means to his success, but also the reason he shared his passion for music with the community. He said when he was growing up, no one in the neighborhood wanted to become a doctor, but it was because they didn't know one doctor. So now he feels responsible to share his passion with music, for music, with the ones that have less, but also the ones that dream to become a musician one day. And he's there to tell him, if I did it, you can do it. So that day, I understood why I do what I do. I'm a painter. I'm an artist. And like any other profession, I have to put the work. I have to be disciplined to get paid. But that was never enough. I always wanted to do more. And my need to share my passion for art has always been present. But I understood it more. Because that was the same thing I was saying. If I, if I can do it, you can do it. I have a quote that I absolutely love. It's very short and simple. When you learn, teach. When you get, give. By Maya Angelou. Very, very simple. But when we understand the true meaning of that quote, it becomes really, really profound. I moved to Bowman in 2000 from Chihuahua, Mexico. And I promise you, it was so, so incredibly difficult for me. I was so homesick. Uh, didn't want to eat anything. I was really sad. And I saw Bowman as a really great place, sad. But what I realized, it was in Bowman. I was the one that was so sad. It only took meeting some people. And I will always remember something that Greg Buscemi said. He said, the only people that think Bowman is boring and there's nothing to do is because they live under a rock. Today, I agree 100% with him. I have a joke that is really not a joke anymore. I always tell people, do not move a teenager to a country where they don't speak the language because it's already so hard to understand them. Also, a teenager has enough being a teenager, period. So that was me then. But I want to stop for a second before I get more intimate with my speech. Time flies. And if you would have told I do this every time. Uh -huh. If you would have told that girl in high school that she was going to have the opportunity to share this message or her passion for art one day, I promise you that she would have tried it harder from the beginning. But I was a teenager and I refused to learn English. It was so difficult for me to learn English. So for me to stand here and speak English to you, it almost seems surreal. Um, but I do know that my story is not going to change. It just keeps evolving. And my only hope is that I become a better storyteller with time. So there it goes. There's one of the stories that I'm really, really excited to share with you. And that's the one Lynn shared with you a little bit. But I'm going to go in detail. This happens when I'm in high school. My teacher, Marilyn Wall, has this wonderful project to create this big painting reflecting Mexico, what Mexico would look in a painting. 
So when she offers that, I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a great project for a group of us. But she says, no, I think this is for you. I have never done anything this massive. And when I said a big painting, I think you envision in like a big mural or a big, beautiful, big canvas. What this was, was two old bed sheets sewn together in prime. Small budget. <laughs> but I remember, oh, and before I go on, I, I like to say it, and I'm so proud to say this, that almost 20 years later, we're still good friends. And I recently sat with her and her dining table and talked about life. I felt the same support that I felt then, that I feel today. Well, the way I feel or face this fear is by setting up these two canvases against the hall at the house and took my paints out, paint brushes. As I'm getting ready to go to paint, my older brother Cesar is getting ready to go to prom. He looks really good, he always did. I'm ready to go to paint, he leaves the house. And you know the moment that everyone talks when time disappears, when you love or you do what you love is real. And I think that was the first time I was there. The next thing I remember is a noise and is the doorknob. And the first thing that crosses my mind is he's in trouble. He's just coming back and he's so late. Guess what? When he opens the door, it's bright. I painted all night long. But it didn't feel like it. And it was probably because I was 16 or 17, so that's why. Uh, but that night, or actually that morning, I stopped missing home. I was home. I realized that home is a place where you do what you love in a safe environment. And that it doesn't matter what part of the planet I find myself, if I do or continue do, doing what I did that night, I'm going to be okay. Bowman, Texas has welcomed me and my artwork and has made a wonderful home for 21 years now. I promise not to cry. I'm just doing it for her. And I promise you, this is not a choice. Um, but yeah, and, and me saying yes to this project and a lot of things that I'm doing, like today, uh, I understood Georgia O'Keeffe so much more. She said that there was not a single day in her life that she wasn't terrified. But that didn't stop her from doing what she loves. I was terrified. That didn't stop me from doing that painting. I'm terrified today, and that's not going to stop me from finishing this speech. 2011 was a little bit more. Oh, I'm about to cry so much more. I'm sorry. Uh, 2011 was a more real, life-changing uh, period. Um, high school, I was able to do or feel like an artist with, without knowing that I was one yet. But in 2011, I met a wonderful abstract painter from Mexico City, and he was the first real artist, not in a book, not in a magazine, not on TV. He was a young, talented guy, and he called himself an artist. That was really brave. But just like Perry, the saxophone player, said, I needed to meet one for me to believe that I can become one. Later on, I met the very diverse and beautiful community of artists that we have in Bowman. You name it, musicians, poets, sculptors, photographers. We have it all. He introduced me to someone um, very special. He is here, uh, Homer Pillsbury. And, and it was wonderful because Homer Pillsbury um, became or help me see Bowman with different eyes. He was the one that showed me how to embrace Bowman from the oil industry to the most amazing musicians that came out of this area. Like I started seeing Bowman through his eyes and that changed my perception of the area to, the, to a deeper level. Um, he always told me I was ready, even if I didn't feel like I was. He told me, you're good to go. You're ready to go. And a lot of the first things that I adventured to do was because of him. One of those was uh, Art in the Park in Orange. 
That was my very first time showing art. That was the first time I sold a painting to someone, which I couldn't believe he was buying it. And, and that was pretty exciting, but the doors kept open. The next thing was I was able to show at the art studio, Poman Art League, Texas Artist Museum, Finders Fair. The Victoria House was such a cool uh, show because it was so cool that I actually got to show with the abstract painter. You know, we became um, buddies and show together. By 2015, I was invited to Southeast Texas Art Museum and I was uh, able to show their cafe. And that was such a beautiful experience. And all of those shows were really exciting and I enjoyed them, but I was looking for more and I wasn't sure what it was. Remember when first Thursday was a new thing and everybody's trying to get creative and find new things that involve the community? Well, I was all about it. So when Taco La Bamba offered me a little spot so I can have an activity with the community, guess what I wanna do? I wanna share the same experience that I had in high school. I wanna put this big canvas against the wall, offer my paint, paint brushes, in my presence. And I wanna tell them, this is just for you to have fun. No pressure, just paint. What I decided to do with those paintings is a series of paintings that are called I Love Bowman. And I wanted to paint Bowman in color. I want to put a color in Bowman. So I picked different buildings and things that represent Bowman. But in this case, I'm letting the kids paint in. And not always kids, some, sometimes adults, because they look really hard and they wait until I say, come on, you too. And they do. So that was kind of the beginning and until today, we still do it in different events. Anytime I have a chance to put a big canvas and invite kids to paint, I do it. Again, the art museum says, um, how about you do a summer camp? And I promise you, just like I said, terrified, I say yes to everything, I say yes to that. I've never been in a classroom. I don't know if I should be trusted in a classroom because I never thought, but the lesson plan gets done the lease supplies gets done. And because I'm new and naive, I propose to do a paper mache. Do you know what that involves? That involves a lot of newspapers, water, and flour to make the paste. We work so hard. I, these these uh, volunteers that help me now are going to college, but every time we see each other, if we remind ourselves about that day, we all remember how much work it was. Not just for them or myself, but these kids were for a whole week. And it was so rewarding because some of these people still have their piñatas and piggy banks in the house. Their grandma has their little piñata in their living room. And I actually had a little experience and it was your daughter, so I'm gonna share it. Just like I said with these murals, the only thing I can remember and I promise you is that their face telling me the first time painting is the thing that I remember the most. What I remember about this summer camp, paper mache, even though it was so, so crazy, it, it was a lot of work. I remember this little girl, now she has a name, Alex. And I remember a little girl saying, Miss Ines, Miss Ines. She has a question, right? So I turn around and I look at this little girl and she has paste on her forehead and she has paste by her mouth. And the only thing I want to ask her is like, are you eating the paste? <laughs> Would she respond? She says, no. And I want to believe that she was saying the truth. Uh, so that was pretty, uh, like I said, those are the things that I remember and I take with me. And I know they remember too, and they take with them. The more I get involved with the arts and the city projects, the more relevant and important I think art is to a community and the city's development. I believe that any project that is happening right now that involves the arts will become more relevant with time. But if we acknowledge it, support it, and embrace it now, they're gonna create a bigger impact. The opportunity to, the opportunities that are happening or coming to me right now look different, different shapes and forms. And I'm excited about all of them. I'm very excited. Uh, but I believe that there's a combination of two things. 
first we have to keep sharing who we are, what we do with the new generation. But I think it's important to listen to those with experience. So if we mix those two things. I think we can have a better progress and, and a better community. I also like to say that I strongly believe that R is a language that speaks to everyone. Doesn't matter what your background is. And that gives me so much hope. Okay, everyone wants to know about this, right? Or you forgot, I don't know, you probably did. <laughs> this story that I'm about to share with you happens when um, in Chihuahua. And I share a few occasion and oh my goodness, I have some guests of mine on the back that can tell you that I couldn't even start the story because I was already crying. Uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing better, Martha, yeah. <laughs> uh, the story is, I'm in Chihuahua, and we are a very close family, very close family. My older brother, the, my older brother Cesar, the one that went to prom earlier, remember? He moved to Bowman before we do, and he, he's missed very deeply. We miss him terribly. That was one of the reasons we decided to move as well. We couldn't be in a part. He goes back to Mexico the first year and brings a couple of gifts. I remember there was a few games, um, a CD, Bastard Boys, the Millennium CD. I got that at that time. Uh, but then he had a box, and the box was about this big. I'm not joking with you. It was big. And that box was full of this. Does anybody know what this is? Yes. OK, good. Awesome. The box was full of this. And I was so excited. Like, I've never been so excited to open a box of anything. And the crazy thing is that it was exactly this. The box was full of crayons, and it was only blue, red, and green. But you know, I didn't care. I got really creative and made so much out of those three colors. I always describe that box as a box of treasure. I really do. But the story goes on. Later on, I find myself living in Bowman, going to high school, and I'm working in a restaurant for only two weeks. It was supposed to be a summer job for two weeks. And little did I know that this place will become my second home, it's Carabas. I got to do every position you can imagine from here to there. Uh, and one of those things that I had to do was cleaning tables. So one day, as I'm cleaning one of the tables, I see something so familiar on that table. And it's this. Oh, it all makes sense in a second. I got very emotional. I remember the same instant everything clicked. My brother had mentioned that he did work as well for a summer at the restaurant cleaning tables. What I realized is that every night, or every day that he worked, when he cleaned those tables, instead of putting them on the trash, he saved them in his apron. And that was so he can bring it to us. Um, it was great to, to have that moment because I realized two things. I realized that some people's trash can be some people's treasure. But I also realized that Bowman came to me before I came to Bowman. So I want to thank you again, because um, this is such a wonderful opportunity to, for me to share uh, what I do, but a little bit of my story. I also want to share that there's something really important happening in Bowman, and it's called our space. We're going through this through the steps to, to hopefully make this happen. But before we do, we need to fill it up survey. And it's very simple. If you know an artist, if you are an artist, if you wanna just help and fill it up, it's only a few questions. It is all um, part of the process. So if we don't do this, then the next step cannot happen. And again, it's for the arts. I have a few photos that I would like to share with you. Oh, there I was. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. <laughs> but there's some photos that Lynn Castle helped me uh, to, to set for you. 
I do, we love to answer any questions that you might have. And um, thank you again. Any questions for Ines? We still have some time. Yes, Ines? Yes, Sherry? Okay, the stories get better here. Right? Uh -uh. Central High School was closed and nobody was allowed to take anything because it was just like nobody was allowed to go in. Uh, my high school teacher, Manly Wall, for some reason, she took it just before they closed those doors. So it's in my closet. It's folded and hang on a hanger. Mm -hmm. Yes. He, he was the first one to move here. He now has a beautiful family of, of a boy and a girl. He, um, he's a welder and works in Orange, I think. Mm -hmm. I think, don't, don't, I didn't say that. He does work in Orange. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. You're yeah. welcome. Uh, we have, uh, yes, Mary. I love that question because like I said, uh, if I continue doing what I'm doing, I think it doesn't matter where I am, I'll be home. But I see myself sharing this with, with, a, with a lot of people. I always saw myself sharing what I do in a really, really large scale. So if I hope, hopefully by 10 years from now, I'll, I'll have done a TED Talk already. And hopefully that went really well. <laughs> Yeah, and I promise not to cry on that one. Yeah. Thank you, Ines, for being our speaker today. Uh, most importantly, thank you for saying yes to your passion. Thank you for saying yes to the challenge that Ms. Wall uh, presented you. Thank you for saying yes to Beaumont. Because of all of that, Beaumont's better community because of it. And we appreciate you being here. Uh, for your being here, we're making a contribution to our Rotary Foundation in your name in appreciation for uh, being here today and for what you do for our community. Thank you, Inez. Am I right? Wasn't that wonderful? Oh, Inez, you have a phone call. I, I, I just wanted to tell y'all really quickly because you'll see the pictures flash up. But she did the she did the tables out at Cattail Marsh. She did the new bikes that that the C, CVB is um, launching. You know downtown, and so you'll see her art all over town. And then if you live in the West End, you'll see her light box that she did, and you'll recognize it because she has that kind of stained glass, beautiful colors. So just be look, just open your eyes and look because you'll see her art all over the place. Thank you, Lynn, for sharing that. Yes, and, uh, and you know you can find her art at the Art Museum of Southeast Texas, in case you didn't hear that. So looking, uh, looking ahead, next week's speaker will be Lene uh, Sanford from the uh, Lutcher Theater. She's spoken with us before. She'll talk about how the Lutcher is returning to live performing arts. And you heard Lynn, uh, Deborah Drago mention Rotary After Hours. Uh, Robert Cocott and I are looking forward to seeing all of you tomorrow evening for uh, Rotary After Hours at First Financial Bank and my office there for First Financial Trust. Thank you to all of our guests for being here. Thank you to Rotarians for inviting them. And um, remember, um, our theme of the year is everyone bring one, right? Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, yes, and Sherry Pierce, uh, like she said before, saying now, uh, sign up for Wine Down with Rotor because this is a big event and everybody needs to participate in, in some way. So now if you would please stand and say the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, second, third, and fourth. Thank you and have a good week and serve to change lives.